Welcome to Real Simple Cooking School. It's Wednesday. It's right around 1. Today, we have a very special guest, Jesse Sheehan. Hello, peeps. Author of The Vintage Baker. Phil, get a shot. Phil? <laughs> Um, we are making icebox cake today, one of the real simple pleasures in life, I would say. Absolutely. Jessie actually wrote the book on icebox cakes, um, and her new book, Vintage Baker, it's a pretty awesome story. You want to tell us about it? Yes. So The Vintage Baker is a cookbook filled with recipes that I have twisted and tweaked from my vintage recipe booklets. This booklet, in fact, is the booklet that the, um, the recipe we're going to make today came from. And as Dawn is showing you, these are some, can you look at these ones? Thank you. These are some <laughs> of the, <laughs> I forgot his name already. Phil. Phil, sorry, Phil. <laughs> Phil's looking, showing you some of the um, cool booklet covers. So, sorry, I got a little distracted. But essentially, the cookbook is a collection of recipes um, that I've twisted and tweaked from my collection of vintage recipe booklets, um, sort of changing the sugar content, let's say, or the kind of sugar, or an alternative flour, or something like that, to kind of um, make them a little bit more palatable for the 21st century baker. And when we first met with Jesse, I guess this was like, mm -hmm. I feel like I was wearing pants, so it yeah. was cold out. Yeah. But she brought in all of these little vintage recipe booklets yes. with her, and they're so cool. I'm sure that moms, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, or grandfathers, have these sort of like little pamphlets laying around, dig into them, they're so cool, or don't and just get Jesse's book. There you go. And what's cool, the book actually has this tiny little booklet that's inserted inside, which I love, that Chronicle Books, who published the book, put inside. Did you see it, honey? I right just there. saw it. Yeah, it's right. Here it is. Perfect. And that is really fun to look at too. It has the re some very old recipes, like pre-1923 recipes and, and pictures. And it's very, very just, cool. They're fun and they're a good, I find them to be this incredible kind of blank canvas because there isn't there aren't a lot of embellishments with which to develop fun recipes. Yeah, like this one. Okay, so today we're going to make the chocolate coconut icebox cake with almonds. Toasted almonds. With toasted Perfect. almonds. So that's what we're going to make today. Um, before we get started, we'll quickly review the rules. Rule number one: we wash our hands. Rule number two: we play nice. This is a constructive teaching kitchen, and we aim to keep it that way. If you don't have anything nice to say. So long. Let's make icebox cake. Yay! Okay, so Jessie's gonna make hers. Yeah. And then at the last minute, I sort of decided. This is you, honey. Oh, that's this fine. Is me. Yep. I decided I would make one too. So we're gonna do two different versions, and you'll see really how simple this is. Um, I would encourage you to make it this weekend. Also, we talked about it a couple weeks ago. There's like a ton of birthdays right now in September. You know, like exciting yes. Thanksgiving and holiday times. Um, mean babies in August and September. So anyway, chances are you have someone with a birthday coming up, and this is a great birthday cake option. And also, just because right now in New York City, it is so incredibly hot. This so hot. is like the perfect dessert for hot days because you're never turning on your oven. The only thing you're turning on is, is your stand mixer or your hand mixer. Or your hand mixer. We're going to do both. Okay, to get started, first we need to line yes. our pan. So this is like a regular loaf pan, whatever you make your banana bread in, use that. Perfect. And I was saying to Dawn earlier, although it doesn't say it in the recipe, we're going to be lining, it does say this, it says to line these with the pan with plastic wrap to help you release your cake. But I realized, after writing the recipe, um, that it helps a little bit to spray it yeah. before you put the, uh, the plastic wrap in. It just helps it stick, so it's a little easier to assemble. And I think that plastic wrap is one, I think it was Ina who said it, like it sticks best to itself than anything else. So this is going to help it kind of slide around um, and you have fewer this, wrinkles, I think. This really scares me and I've no Oh, here's another one. Do I go like this? You, oh, that's all you do. You press oh down and then it's done, I think. Now lift up and it should be, oh. Guys, magic. That was amazing. This is the stretch tight. Wrap and snap, 7,500. Can I, I wonder say, that was incredible. what happened to the other um, 7,499 right. Did they just pick versions? a random number? I, who could say? Yeah, We it's, might need to research that. When I was um, freelancing and I would make invoices, I would make up random numbers. So it wasn't like <laughs> invoice number three. Right. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. I like that. I got to try that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am like invoice number three. <laughs> okay. So... Pressing the plastic wrap into the corners. 
And this is going to make more sense. I'm going to use this because it's a little bit easier for me. Um, this is going to make more sense later when we pull out the finished cake. Yes, I made one ahead of time because I wasn't sleeping on the job. Okay, so nicely lined. You just did one, huh? Yeah. I mean, I feel like as long as it goes up the side, you're fine. Okay. So don't, like, be too stressed about it. No. I'm already stressed about this plastic. Yeah, but please don't be stressed. Okay. And also, in the, in the recipe, it actually doesn't even say to use the, the, the spray. And so it's a little bit trickier to get the plastic in, but it's fine. Whichever way you want to Okay, so now we're going to whip some cream. Our pans yes. are prepped. Now, I'm just going to make some regular whipped cream, heavy cream, a little powdered sugar, a splash of vanilla, that's it. But Jesse's going to show us actually this very cool um, coconut whipped cream. So to start, we've placed three cans of coconut milk in the fridge overnight. So honestly, the hardest part of this recipe is remembering to put these in the fridge. But I remembered, so we're, we're good. All right, so what's nice about this, guys, is you can, of course, make a coconut whipped cream just using a teeny bit of coconut extract and heavy cream and a little bit of confectioner sugar. What's nice about this is we're going to use the cream that settles on the top of a can of coconut milk when you put it in the refrigerator. If you didn't put it in the refrigerator, you wouldn't get this kind of hard, solid cream, but we take that cream and you can actually whip it. And I add a little bit of heavy cream as well, just so we get a, a really nice whipped cream consistency. Like it's um, gorgeous and luscious. It looks like Pond's cold cream, actually. <laughs> it does look very Pondsy. Pond's is like from my childhood. Yeah. Like I don't think I use Pond's anymore. But you can see it's a little, we don't, um, we don't want to use the liquid. We're just kind of trying to take the Y'all get a spoon. Thank you. But it's pretty easy to see. Like, you can tell when you're getting to the liquid because it's more clear. Yeah. So, so you can just, like, scoop it off the top. It also looks like um, Cool Whip, kind of. Yep. It's, like, very thick and very obviously different than the, and the liquid. Than the liquid. In there. Um, and one thing I would say that's a little bit sad is that this recipe doesn't doesn't call for the actual milk that's left over. So maybe it's not sad, but so you will have this leftover milk. Do with it as you would. What would you suggest? This I would say there's a or smoothie, something? or like you can make a curry or something. Oh, um, maybe Brooke, you could drop a link to some sort of like coconut curry situation on realcivil.com. Oh, great idea. Um, I'm scooping okay. out a little bit more, and because this has been in the fridge overnight. Like, it separates pretty easily. Is that okay? Perf. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to make, like, a curry delicious something later. Yes. So here's our, here's our sort of solidified um, coconut milk. Then we're going to add three-quarters cup of confectioner sugar. And we're going to add a half teaspoon of almond extract. And that's because, really, I want this cake, or I wanted this cake, and now I hope that the cake is this, <laughs> to be like a coconut almond chocolate. Is that like a mounds bar? Yes, mounds. Yes. So that's, no, no. You're not, you're not allowed almond to, joy. Almond joy. You're not allowed to say almond joy, so I couldn't call it an almond joy, I expect it, but I really Like in print, to. so we exactly. can say it here. I can say it here. Yeah. Um, no rules. Like rules that. are, there are no rules. All right, guys, so now, this is gonna be a little loud, but what we're doing now is whipping up the um, solidified coconut milk along with the confectioner sugar and the almond extract. And just until it's kind of smooth and thick, and then we're going to add actual whipped cream. Um, Meanwhile, over here, I'm just going to do some regular whipped cream. So same situation, no coconut. So I would say for every three cups of, or let, let's do it by can cup. Can I steal this from you Of for course, second? of course. For every cup of heavy cream, what would you say? Between, um, I'd say between two tablespoons and a quarter cup exactly. of, of confectioner sugar. Perfect. Less sweet, more sweet, kind right. of up to you. Are there other sweet things going in the pot? Right. Back off. Is that the only sweet thing going in? Go for it. Perfect. Like this is, this is gonna be one and a half cups of heavy cream and it was three quarters cup of sugar. So that's like the quarter cup, except because we have all of the, um, solidified coconut milk as well, it won't be too, too sweet, you know what I mean? 
I'm funny because I actually love sweet. I know that's like really controversial, and everyone else is like, I'm not a, I don't like sweets, but I, I also think sweet. people who say that are lying. I hope you're right. We're hardwired to like sweet things. Right. I mean, and I know lots of pastry chefs who, like, once you have so much sugar, like, you, it's sort of like butchering meat. You're like, yeah, I could have it medium well. That's another story. But um, we're hardwired to like sweet things. I so agree. like, good for you if you can avoid it. But like, I dare you to stick your finger in here and not come back for more. Yes, I completely agree. And now I'm gonna add, so this is now nice and thick um, and smooth. And thank you, as you can see. And I'm gonna add one and a half cups of heavy cream. So I would, would you say you had like one and a half cups almost of the coconut? Oh, good question. I'm gonna... A third. A third. Maybe a half. Maybe a half. So just to give you some context, I'm whipping three <clears throat> cups of cream here and we'll see if it's about the same. Perfect. Stand mixer, hand mixer, it doesn't matter. This will likely take a little bit longer. Um, whatever you have. If your stand mixer is out on the counter, great, use it. If not, use a hand mixer. If you want to like work out a little, do it by hand. If you need to occupy the kids, like give them the hand mixer. But pull your hair back. I once got my oh. hair wound up in the beaters. Very traumatic for eight-year-old me. Um, can I also say one more thing about people and the sweets? Yes. So I have two kids, and my younger child is not that into sweets. And I find that, like, really hard to deal with, and I'm wondering what's happening with Ramona. Has she tried sugar? Not intentionally yet. Okay. So Ramona is my 11-month-old. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, just for some of our new viewers right. who might not know, but she has had, like, sugar in like pancakes or like a muffin mm -hmm. scenario but we haven't like given her ice cream or cake yet and interestingly enough my husband Matt hello hun um for her birthday you know like the smash cake is a whole thing for the first birthday but yeah. he's like please can we not do cake right away he's like and he loves wow. sweets loves and I think he just thinks, look, it's inevitable. Right, like, why do she's it? gonna love it. Like, let's just right. stave off the. Because I did have the whole, when they turned one, I gave them cake yeah. thing. Um, but I was in a museum with my mother when my second child was seven months old, and I went to the ladies' room and she fed him ice cream. Right. Yeah. <laughs> as, as mothers are wont to do. Um, I just want to show you guys this. Yeah. So, this is nice and clean. this regarding the toasted coconut I toasted this ahead of time my recommendation you can see how like I have some dark pieces here and some light pieces here I'm gonna say 300 is the sweet spot for toasting coconut in the oven this was 350 and it's like it's kind of uneven depending on the pan you're using it may toast unevenly so lower and slower is better for sweetened coconut, because that sugar is going to caramelize really fast. Um, who wants to lick the beaters? <laughs> <laughs> Tessa and Phil, immediately. <laughs> Phil. Um, my, also, my other favorite thing as a kid. Um, oh, I wanted to say one thing about heavy cream. That's what you're looking for when you're making whipped cream from scratch. I'll say this. As much as I'm a proponent for organic dairy, um, I, I think it's harder to whip organic dairy than it is to do like a more um, uh, commercial, bigger, conventional. ultra pas conventional, ultra pasteurized cream. The color is better. It's harder to over whip. So that's just like a small thing. Yep. But whatever cream you got, use it. Yep. Question from Jerry. Good question. So Jerry asks, do you chill your bowls when you're whipping cream? 
I say unnecessary. Okay, I won't lie, it does say to do that in the book, oh. in my book, and in my icebox cake book. However, if you do not, you're still, look, we didn't show the bowl and we have beautiful, I mean, I would say maybe on a hot, this, it's nice and cool in here, maybe on a hot day in your house, if you didn't have air conditioning, or a fan and it just felt too hot, it might be a nice idea. It just helps it to whip up faster and a little firmer. What I would say is make, just make sure that your cream is cold. Yes. So I think that's a bigger thing than, than not. A question from the back, Brooke, or from the internet. Ah, ooh. Yeah, um, I'm gonna say yes, there's yes. a solution. You might not like it though. What you, what's your solution gonna be? Cool Whip. Oh. I'm pretty sure Cool Whip is vegan. Non-dairy whip topping, that's how it's labeled. So, why are you choosing to be vegan? Like, health reasons, Cool Whip might not be the, right. the move for you. Um, but, if it's just strictly about avoiding animal products, then Cool Whip's an option for you. I was also gonna say that when I was developing the recipe, originally I loved the idea that you would just use mm. the, the solid from the cans. Yeah. You wouldn't add the whipped cream at all. But I found in testing it that it was just, it held up better, it was stronger. I wasn't even sure how many cans you'd have to use to make yeah. like that. It would be like, a, like, okay, go out and buy six cans. It just seemed like a little bit too much. And I didn't think that the end product was going to stand up as well yeah. as when you add the whipped cream. That's why I did that, because I kind of, I'm not a vegan, but I kind of liked that idea. Yeah. But that's what I ended up with. I just wanted to say, again, it doesn't say it in the book, but this is a great tool for so many things. But one is scooping whipped cream um, for an icebox cake, because you can keep it really even. So I think this is a quarter cup scoop. So this is about three quarters of a cup. You think that's the move, three? That's what I, this might be a teeny bit larger than my, um, than my banana bread pan, as we affectionately uh -huh. call it. Um, but I think what's hard with, I mean, not hard, nothing is hard with an icebox cake, but what's, what can be tricky is your layers being even and not being, my problem is I love whipped cream so much that I put it in the same amount. And some people want a little more cookie. So what's nice about this is it keeps me in check. Maybe you guys don't need to be in check, but I sometimes need to be. And if you're like me, you end up eating half of the whipped cream <laughs> along the way. So it's good to, it's good to keep yourself honest. Okay, totally. so Jesse is using these amazing famous chocolate wafers. Pretty classic icebox cake uh, meat, if yes, you will. The cakey <laughs> component. Yeah, so if you're into puzzles, you may like waste a decent amount of time like I did yesterday, really like breaking pieces and fitting them perfectly <laughs> in there. Um, but I'm gonna show you, you can also do a similar kind of thing with grams. Any kind of thin wafery cookie, those um, Anna's thins, like ginger are thins, great. are really good. Yep. I think I've heard, I don't go to Trader Joe's that frequently, but I've heard that Trader yes. Joe's has awesome thin cookies for icebox cakes. Yes, so, you know, have fun in the cookie aisle. Take a gander and see what's there and, and try a few Just different types. I just wanna show you, this is my um, attempt at a puzzle. Clearly I'm not very good at puzzles, but there, what I'm trying to do is put in whole cookies and then break up other cookies to kind of fill in, as it were. And then I get my trusty scoop and scoop another leg. Now, if you're gonna wing it, which yeah. I think is like a fun project to do, again, with kids or just on like a hot day inside, you could put a layer of fruit in here, like strawberries or bananas could yeah. be cool. Um, I've seen other icebox cakes with like layers of pudding Yep. But you wrote the book on icebox yep. cakes. Like, what are some of your so favorite I totally, iterations? I, think I love fruit. I love make, using, I mean, maybe right now we're feeling it's so hot, we're not, this sounds a little heavy, but I like doing it with layers of caramel or layers of ganache. Ooh. Um, I think, um, I, 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 I think sort of the, 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 the icebox cake world is your oyster, as it were, mm. and you can almost put anything in that you feel like will either soften a bit in the refrigerator or will um, be able to be sliced easily when other, your other components have softened. Because actually what happens here, for those that maybe don't know, is that the, um, the refrigerator is like your oven, right? It essentially bakes the icebox cake because the cream is absorbed by the cookies. I call it the cakey component. So the cakey component gets, um, gets absorbed by 
the whipped cream, and it basically turns to cake. It, 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 it slices and, 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 and has that kind of um, texture. So anything, I remember when I was developing recipes for icebox cakes, um, we really wanted to try a pear icebox cake, but it was so Ooh. hard to get the pears to really be soft enough that everything around the pears seemed so, because they weren't cooked. Right. Um, everything around the pears seemed so soft, except the pears. And that seemed like, hmm, maybe not the best uh, component for an icebox cake. But bananas are great. Like Don said, berries are great. Um, I got yeah. excited about a layer of sprinkles. I think I'm gonna wait and just leave those for the top of this one. Um, Cause I don't want them to bleed and I've never done it before. And I, I don't know, I, I got nervous. Yeah, I think that's smart. Um, but like this whipped cream obviously has, has coconut in it. There are other, you know, you can kind of play with mixing your things into your cream, like liqueurs, like color, like um, different flavors. Obviously this one is coconut, um, but it's fun. I have a, like a peppermint, a chocolate peppermint icebox cake that's really fun. I tint the cream green and I use peppermint extract and it's, that's a really fun one and that has chocolate wafers and, um, and a dark chocolate ganache. So that's a fun one like the Christmas. So how do I know when to stop? So I kind of go until I run out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I'm on my second box, my second sleeve here. So, and also one thing I was going to say about about all the different um, things you can do with icebox cakes, because Don mentioned pudding, is that um, I found when um, uh, writing the icebox cake book um, that uh, that pudding is best with uh, an ingredient like a graham cracker. Pudding is not great with a cookie. Oh. I think it gets a little too soggy oh. because it's so, you know, kind of wet and cold in a different way than the whipped cream is. Um, you think it's the egg component? Maybe. I'm not sure. I just, I felt, I felt like it, see, that graham crackers were great with pudding and cookies were great with whipped cream. It was like a, uh, that was a nice box cake conclusion that I drew. You know what I'm, speaking of conclusions. Yeah. So banana pudding is just an icebox cake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jerry's mind just exploded at the same time as mine. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions out there about icebox cakes, about other like vintage recipes that you may have in your recipe boxes? No questions, but it's really interesting. Ooh, yeah. like whole lemons? I Julie, how do you do it? Tell us. You don't have to tell us like right this second, one but thing, do get back to us. <laughs> one thing Julie might do is lemon curd. Oh, I yes. have I have an icebox cake in my icebox cake book that calls for lemon curd. Yeah. Or lemon zest in the whipped cream yes. is really yummy. Oh. You, using lemon wafers is really nice. Of course, of right? course. It's really Seven solutions. It's really right fun. And the other thing I wanted to mention in the vintage baker, um, this is one of my icebox cakes in the Vintage Baker, this, this chocolate coconut one, but I also have one that's really yummy, which is a vanilla rhubarb icebox oh. cake, where you kind of, it's a teeny bit more labor intensive, but hardly, because you kind of make a little, um, you stew the rhubarb or turn it into a compote of mm -hmm. sorts on the stove top with a little bit of sugar and chopped rhubarb until it kind of turns into almost like a jam or a compote. Yeah, and you could just use jam. Totally. Yes. Like a layer of strawberry yes. jam, blackberry jam. Yes. Really pretty. So yummy and delicious and very summery. Okay. Julie, what's up? Lemon curd, cream, and lemon juice. Duh. That sounds great. Oh, Super I'm yum. Slow. I'm sorry. So you're okay. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just like cover this up and stick it in the fridge, and then tomorrow we get to eat it. Yum. And so Jesse's gonna finish. Assembling. Yes, and I'm 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 basically done. Okay, I and just then wanted, I'm gonna grab the other one. I just wanted to mention that it doesn't really matter what your last layer is because it's gonna be on the bottom. Okay. Because I ran out of whipped cream, I'm gonna do one last layer of cookies. But if it had been the other way around and I had run out of um, uh, I had run out of cookies, then the last layer could be whipped cream. Totally not something to be worried about. So it's sort of like whatever happens first. Totally. And. And I sort of intentionally stopped because I wanted to save a little whipped cream for decoration. Um, these, I guess I didn't need to get them out, but when I turn 
that guy out tomorrow, I'll take a picture and send it to you guys, or share it with you guys. I'm gonna put these on top, it'll be pretty. I realized why you did two pieces of plastic, because now I need to cut another one for the top. Is that why you did that? Because you knew you'd have to cover, that was smart. Um, I don't I know, I just did it. But that was smart. I need, I need one more, thank you. Okay, so. Wrap it up, stick it in yep. the fridge. What's the minimum? Gosh, so that was something else that I felt like I struggled a lot with my with the, my first book on icebox cakes because you, you read on the back of the box, oh, four, I think it says four to six hours. I never think that's quite long enough. Right. I think eight hours is better. Personally, I love overnight. Yeah. And in my icebox cake book, I give you recipes for the cookies. The, if you do anything with homemade, it's definitely overnight. Because okay. they don't have, I think because they don't have preservatives and stuff. So... Just plan on making it a day ahead. That's what that's like best practice and just like so much easier. One might even say it's real simple. Okay, so this is the one I made yesterday. Let's see, I did not use a scoop so my layers could be <laughs> uneven. You can see how I got like sort of, um, you know, compulsive about fitting my broken cookies into place. But so then theoretically we just kind of flip this Absolutely. over, right? Absolutely, I put this on top. Okay. Jerry found the perfect rectangular platter. Jerry's amazing. Oh. And, 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 and. Yep. I'll pull. Grab okay. a friend. Oh, okay. I see it releasing. Very yep. satisfying. Perfect. Ta da! I'm gonna peel off. Da -da -da. It really is so like retro and wonderful. Boop, boop, boop. And then we're just gonna put. Oh, wait, should oh, we do oh. more cream? Yes. Great idea. So, Jesse did mention that like sexy naked sides are good, but if you're nervous or you're like, I really want to kind of dress this up a little bit, you can cover it with a little more cream. Totally. So either reserve some from your initial whip or just whip a little more. And you can, I, I, I actually just tested this the other day. You can, if you have some left over, which I did when I made this a few days ago, um, I think maybe it's because of the coconut milk. I'm not sure, but it really is fine 24 hours later. So oh, I nice. put some, yeah, I know. I put some in the fridge and then the next day I had it. Funny story, so when, when the book was photographed, the, the picture, can I just show them yes, the picture? Yes, please. It's so beautiful. Um, the picture in the book of this cake has it covered in whipped cream. And I, of course, was kind of horrified because I hadn't, I, uh, I hadn't planned on the whipped cream being left over and you can't, obviously cover it unless you have it left over since it gets covered afterwards. But, um, so I kind of wrote that in the head note, like, naked is great. Um. <laughs> Sometimes we back into solutions exactly. and it's fine. Naked is the best. Um, but, uh, but long story short, um, you, if you want to save the cream, it will last the 24 hours. And there you go. Now we do, because I'm into this like what did we say it was almond, almond joy. joy? Because I'm into this almond joy thing, we're gonna put and we so we had a little bit of the almond extract, and now we're gonna have Yeah. Yeah. And we're, you could do more toasted coconut on top oh, if you wanted. That looks so pretty. I love So pretty. It. Don't you love the way Dawn did the whipped cream on top? Because I would have like gone all the way around the sides, but she is like well, she's the teacher. That's what I she did. Also like didn't have that much left over. So again, you just kind of it like perfect. roll with the punches. It was perfect. Should we grab a couple, a couple plates really and slice to. this up? Okay. I really want to. So one of the tricks that you suggest is a serrated knife. Yes. So let's try and find one down here. And also guys, um, it never, it, I mean, at least this, this is how I feel. It never looks the way you want. You think you're gonna have like the perfect slice where you can see every layer, like in that picture I just showed you. It doesn't always happen, but what will help is serrated knife and it's a little tedious, but um, you do this, honey, where you, where you um, uh, put the blade of the knife under hot water and then dry it. Yes. It helps make it clean. We might not do that right now, and we might oh wait, here it is. Oh, okay. there we go. Guys, I'm having trouble finding a serrated. I got it, I got oh, it. Oh, perfect. Okay, remember, serrated is the one with the teeth, with the shark teeth. This is also a slicer, maybe like a good backup if you didn't have this guy. Totally. Should I grab our plates? Yes. Okay, and then, look how pretty this is right here. Two plates, and then the horn, and the nuts. Okay, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if this was, my real life, I know this is my real life, there's no boundaries, but like I would just lift this off. I'm not gonna do that <laughs> right this second. Let's see if I can get a nice. Perfect. Pretty not good, bad. pretty good. You can kind of see, guys. Mm. 
It is really good. <laughs> okay, let's try again. Yum. And you can see it's really, I mean, it looks like cake. It does not look One, like a cookie two, anymore. Three. Perfect. Even better. This is a situation where you want to prepare for dismount. So, you know, get another offset spatula or a pie server, something. Yeah, I mean, and that's really all there is to it. Are you guys going to make icebox cake at home? Jerry's thinking about it. Yeah. Brooke, are the people excited to make icebox cake at home? Oh, they do? Thank you, guys. Thank you guys so much. Um, Jesse, you approve yes, of this? I approve. I love everything about it. And this is, guys, this is for reals, OK? That's what it's probably going to look like. Maybe you'll have a little bit better luck, but that's OK. It is so yummy. No one's going to care. No one's going to care. Other things, you could double this and do it in like yep, a uh, nine inch square. Full on. You could or the triple. 13 by nine. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You can go nine by 13 for a big crowd. I might make this for Ramona's birthday next month. We'll see. Also, I want to say one really cute thing to do with icebox cakes, like for a party, Labor Day, um, mini ball jars, four ounces. Oh, cute. Layer those babies up. A cookie, some, a dollop of whipped cream, a cookie, a dollop of whipped cream. So cute. Guys, The Vintage Baker by Jesse Sheehan. Go get it. Brooke's dropping the link. Um, make some icebox cake. Take a picture. Tag at RS Cooking School. I'll see you back here in a couple weeks. Have a great long weekend. Bye, guys. Bye. Jesse, thanks Happy for holiday. being here. Thank you, Dawn. I loved it. I'm sad I didn't dance with you, though.